So this is how I programmed in, well, the middle 1980s. Uh, this is Turbo Pascal 3. Now look at it, there's no windows, no, uh, there's no mouse control. It's just a plain screen. So how do I even get started? Well, I select E for edit, put my work file name. Oh, before I do that, let's find out what's available. I've got a D for directory mask. Let's have a look at the Pascal files. Okay, so it shows me the files in this directory. I've got one here that I've written earlier, so let's use that as my edit file. Adv game .pars. There it is. It's loaded into an editor. Now that might not look very slick to you. For the mid 1980s, that was already pretty good stuff. You have to remember that people who were programming in C, for example, Lattice C was quite a big product at that time. They didn't have a built in editor like this. They would be editing with some standalone editing tool, often a line editor. That is, you edit one line at a time. You, you, you don't just sort of scroll up and down uh, in, a, in a full screen editor like this. We all expect full screen editors these days. That was quite a big thing at the time. Um, more than that, let me just try and compile it. I'll put in a syntax error. So there's a syntax error. It needs this uh, semicolon there, but I'll exit the editor, control KD. There are all these special commands you had to remember. C for compile, error one, and it's uh, telling me there's my semicolon missing. Takes me to the line where the error has occurred. This again was, it was pretty slick stuff for the mid 1980s. In, in Lattice C, for example, or C compilers, you would write the code one line at a time, you'd compile it and you'd link it, you'd run it. Perhaps only at that point would you notice that there was some error, you'd have to go back, you'd have to load up into your line editor very uh, slow. So let's just try this again and I'll try running it and it's compiled it straight away. This is why it's called Turbo Pascal. It was so fast. So here's my little adventure game. I'm in a smelly cave. Go south, crystal dome, south again, no exit, west, no exit, quit and return to end. Now, one of the other things that was fundamental that might seem odd to a modern programmer Fundamental about Turbo Pascal, the language in those days, was it was procedural, no object orientation. Nobody was, well, hardly anybody was using object orientation back then. There were a few people who might have been using small talk, uh, the classic object oriented language, but most of the rest of the world was using a language like C or, or Pascal, um, which didn't have objects. Now, I'm still running Turbo Pascal 3 here from the 1980s. I've done this inside a DOS emulator, DOS box. You can download free copies of, of old versions of Turbo Pascal and the DOS emulator DOS box if you want to follow along. Uh, let me just uh, minimize this so you can see this is uh, in DOS box. I can actually write using a more modern environment. I can write procedural, more or less Turbo uh, Pascal compatible code and here I'm using Lazarus again a free IDE um, this has got all sorts of bells and whistles that Turbo Pascal never even dreamt of like you know uh, syntax coloring and um, so on. it's got object orientation as well but I'm deliberately ignoring the object orientation for now uh, just to show you a, a simple game uh, that I've written procedural game using pretty much Turbo Pascal syntax. This I've written in Lazarus and I run it and this is a little bit, uh, I've got a bit further in this one than in the one I just showed you, but you can see it's essentially the same. It's run from a command line. I go south and north and I, in this one I can actually take objects as well. Take sword, and sword taken, what's my, my inventory? So I've got a sword and a lamp and so on. So this is pretty much Turbo Pascal compatible. There are few changes to the syntax. For example, in Turbo Pascal 3, I couldn't uh, return a complex data item from a function like a, a room. Uh, that's a, uh, in this case, that's a record, which is a, it's a bit like an object in that it, it's, it's like a C struct. It contains data. It does not uh, contain um, functions or methods and nor can it use inheritance.
but it's a, it's a relatively complicated structure. I couldn't return a room in Turbo Pascal 3. I would have to send a room as an argument. Uh, let's go back to Turbo Pascal. Where is it? Uh, here you can see, um, go into the editor and you can see that I've sent the room here as an argument, a var parameter, that's a, a, a reference to the room. Uh, well, in, in the more modern version of, of Pascal, I can just return a room from a function. And a few other things like string, uh, that the string data type is slightly different in traditional old style Turbo Pascal. I had to declare a string as an array of characters with a, a fixed length. But apart from that, I can do pretty much the, the same sort of procedural programming. Now, why would I want to write procedurally? I think really the advantage of knowing procedural programming is that it builds in all sorts of good programming uh, style, if you like. You have to keep things modular, tidy, uh, readable. You have to do a lot more programming as well. The class library is not there for you. So I've had to, in, in this uh, version here, I've, I've had to, uh, create my own list management, whereas in C Sharp or, or Java, some modern object-oriented language, there'd be all sorts of list management classes. So it's a, it's a, it's a good um, skill to have. Also, of course, not all modern programming languages are object-oriented. Uh, Go, Golang, is not fully traditionally object-oriented. It has some object-oriented type features, but it doesn't do inheritance, for example. And C, which is still an amazingly important language, is again a procedural language without any objects. Um, right, so that's a, a short look at uh, procedural Pascal as programmed in the 1980s. I'm going to follow on from this by looking at how I wrote this uh, simple game that I've been showing you. Uh, in a procedural style in Pascal. And you can see here, this is the slightly more complex version where I've actually had to do my own list processing. And uh, I think this is quite a, a, good, a, a good project for somebody who wants to get to grips with the fundamentals of procedural programming to, to deal with. And um, I'll come back to that shortly. In the meantime, if you want to start your own project in Pascal, I suggest you download Lazarus with a free Pascal, or if you are really, really uh, a, a, retro, uh, um, a retro enthusiast and you want to do it the old way, well, you can still download this version of Turbo Pascal.